Hello and welcome to Wednesday's Words of Worship. A special shout out to my friend Josh, who promised that he would be listening today. Now over the last several weeks, we've talked a lot about worship. And today, I want to talk about what we do when we face tough realities, tough times in our lives. How do we worship then? When we go through a job loss, death of a loved one, a debilitating disease, or an ongoing problem with family or other relationships. There's a lot of other possibilities, big and small, that can sometimes appear massive, and we can easily feel overwhelmed or crushed by the weight of our circumstances. You know, in fact, in light of the problem, whatever that might be, nothing else is even visible. How do we worship then? The writer of Psalm 42 seems to have experienced the same type of trouble. The author was most likely a Jewish exile living among the Gentiles where he was being oppressed. And throughout the chapter, he questions his faith. And he was grieved and felt that the Lord had forgotten him. He questions the Lord 11 times as he wonders why God doesn't do something for him. And then we read that he finally comes to victory and peace and is able to once again worship God. So how was he able to turn that corner and move from grief and doubt to peace and worship? Well, to answer that, I'd like to share a personal experience with you. In July of 2019, my mother passed away from colon cancer. It was a rough time for our family. Both of my parents had been committed Christians and lived their lives in godly obedience, selfless service, and Christ-like love. My parents dated for four years, and then they were married for over 62 years. They experienced the loss of their first son, and then went on to raise three more boys, of which I'm the middle son. Now, I know the loss of my mother was very hard on my father. He said some days the weight of the loss felt crushing. I asked my dad if he would be willing to share some insights in how he was able to move from grief and despair to peace and worship during this difficult time. And here are some of the insights and wisdom from my father. First, he said, establish an anchor now. If you're not worshiping God now, if you're not seeking God, developing a relationship with him, reading his word now, how will you be able to draw upon his strength in times of trouble? My parents were both students of the word of God. They prayed together, they worshiped together, and they sought after the heart of God together. My dad anchored his heart so deeply with God that through the practices of his reading, his praying, and his worshiping God, it allowed him to feel God's presence and strength in his time of loss. One of the verses my dad meditated on was from John 14, 27, where after Jesus assures his disciples of his presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives, he said this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. The second insight from my dad is look back and remember how God has sustained you in the past. Dad reflected often on the message of Psalm 32.8. With God's promise to instruct and teach us in the way we should go. And to counsel and watch over us. Dad knew that in times of despair, God was still with him. God doesn't change when our circumstances do. He is still faithful and loving, even when we feel alone, hurt, betrayed, or broken. Dad was able to look back and reflect on how God was working and preparing him before my mom ever even got sick. By reflecting on the journey through mom's cancer, he was able to see how God provided for and guided him throughout the process people that they would meet at just the right time, access to doctors who were able to help, timing of care, many things that were more than just luck or coincidence. The third thing my dad shared is that he prayed for healing. In loss, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's wonder, there's questions. After all, this is a situation where the circumstances are not going to be changed. God will answer in his way. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 tells us not to be anxious about anything, 
But in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My friends, God is faithful even when it feels like we have been forsaken. I hope that you have enjoyed these insights from my dad. Now, if you know my dad, you know he's been a faithful and humble servant of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's been a wonderful example of how to worship in the face of trial and adversity. Pop, I love you. And thank you for introducing me to Jesus Christ. I hope that you all take the time to establish your anchor in God now. To surrender to God, to worship Him, and establish a relationship with Him. So that when trials come, you have an anchor. Then you will be able to look back and remember how God has sustained you. And you will be able to cry out to Him for healing. In remembering my mother, one of her favorite verses was Jeremiah 32:17. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. I'm Kevin, the worship pastor here at Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. Thanks for listening. I hope that you'll join us Sunday for our service and connect group streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And I hope you'll tune in next week for Wednesday's Words of Worship.